Hello. Hello. <laughs> what are you looking at? Confused? That's the cat that came out of the cat flap at the same time. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> oh, you can see our breath. It's cold. <laughs> yeah, it is cold. It's suddenly extremely autumnal. But that's not why we're here. We are here to say hello, we are back. Uh, sorry, we've been away again. Um, work, work, work. Yeah, yeah, Paul's been doing work. We also said last time we had visitors coming. Sadly, their flight was cancelled when they were at the gate at Gatwick Airport because of a problem at Limoges Airport. So we are super gutted that we didn't get to see them, but... Hopefully that'll get rearranged for the future. We miss you guys. Um, but we're back. We are doing work outdoors. It is the water source project, which is, <laughs> it's about the two first, years old. <laughs> the first project we ever started doing before we even had the blog going. Yep, yep. So um, d explain what it is. We have got some old footage as well to show you guys, which, forgive us, it is from when we first started using the camera, so it's a bit wobbly all over the place, but we will cut it in so you can see where we started a couple of years ago. But yeah, like what? Tell us about the water source. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got this water source uh, over here behind me, which is a lovely little feature. Um, it's um, a constant stream, like a freshwater spring, um, a constant stream of water, but when it rains a lot, and that happens in winter, it's a river uh, and that flowing down our garden. So um, the project is to stick some piping in the ground and have it properly piped because the old stone conduit is long since destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what we're doing, but it's been on pause for quite a long time yeah. because it got wintry and too cold to do anything, which is gradually happening again. <laughs> so we're get, trying to get it done now and get rid of this enormous trench that's in the garden, which looks currently like this. So there's been this welt in the garden for years, two years now. This is not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be earth and it even goes down into here. And that bit I have, I have done already. Um, so as you can see, it's very unsightly. <laughs> You're focusing on me and saying it's very <laughs> unsightly. <laughs> it's very unsightly there. So um, this needs to be fixed, which is what we're doing today. So yeah, we will show you guys a little bit of our original footage that we did have on the camera. It's not a lot and it does start midway through. I think we'd already started doing a bit of the digging, um, but for some reason not filmed it. I don't know why. No, I did. I did actually. I just didn't um, tell you about it. <laughs> That's helpful. So yeah, when he says, I didn't tell you about it, what he means is I've been given editing powers. So that means I can make Paul look like a moron for a change. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let's get going. Let's do it. Off you go. Get your digger. <laughs> Now, this has rained a lot over the last day or so and our little rock pool has the water flooding out there where it used to only go over to the right it's now going over to the left pouring out at a rate of knots just redirect it out of there if it goes down the road there the path And now for stage two, the digging of the trench to uh, connect the water source, which is here, to my lovely trench that I've been digging, which is there. Okay, so made a little bit of progress. I've decided probably a good idea now is to uh, swap ends and start at the water source and start digging out that because if I um, 
if I carry on here, I'm going to leave the digger at a very funny angle to do the last sort of digging bit, which is the critical part. Uh, let me show you. The digger's here at the minute, the trench is just there. So if I swap him round, start going the other way for this last little bit, I think that's going to be best. Of course, the only problem is that down here is the previous owner's uh, sort of water supply for the pond, which we're getting rid of anyway, but it's sort of sticking out of the way. So I've got to cut it and I've got to block it up with a cork. There he goes. So what I don't want is uh, a whole bunch of water to be start pouring out of this when I cut it in half. It probably will a little bit. Uh, because it's not a super great fit, that cork. But here we go. Well, that's a lot more than I was hoping for. Hopefully it will stop. Stop soon. Or we're going to have to find a better cork. Okay, so we found another wine cork. This one's rubber. I'm going to try and sticking it in the end. Seeing if that has any results. Come on, go in, you bugger. Good. Hopefully I won't knock that out with a digger. <laughs> right. Now to carry on the process. Let's go. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to my kitchen. Um, I have a huge selection of ingredients spread out in front of me. I've got a pen and a paper. I've got tons of spices and goodness knows what behind the cooker. And I am not touching any of them. <laughs> We've got a special guest star today, Paul's sister, Claire. Hi, everybody. I today am going to make you authentic Indian curry, which I learned from a friend. The uh, <laughs> juxtaposition, I have to say, what? of like me sort of like habituated to France in a jumper and you in a it's summer so dress. Warm here. Like, it's not right warm here. Life's not warm. It is. Boiling. Yeah. It's not. We need to make, for to make a gr amazing authentic Indian curry, you need to first create the base. So what we're going to do is use probably, so we're going to use quite a lot of onion and quite a lot of garlic. This looks like it's too much. And the first time that I ever saw this being made, I was thinking this is going to be the most disgusting thing ever, but trust me, it, it works. So anyway, so shall we get cooking? Right. Do it. So, so <laughs> this looks like, it looks like quite a lot and it is quite a lot and, but it's going to be okay viewers gonna be okay. Let's do entire bowls of garlic. But this curry is probably gonna make enough for us to have, yeah, probably for about eight people. And the as, like I say, the base is the most important thing. So, I'm just gonna let that cook for the next five minutes or so. I'm I have just added a little bit more oil, <laughs> as you can see. You essentially just want it to be covered enough like that, so that it's, again, it's not gonna burn, but it's just gonna cook nicely in there. So I've been stirring this now for roughly about five minutes and you can see in there that it hasn't much changed colour. That's good. That's absolutely fine. It might have gone a tiny bit more golden. I have turned off the heat and that's just so that I can start adding the spices. So first of all, I'm going to add some coriander. So you've got one, roughly about one tablespoon of coriander in there. I'm probably going to add more coriander later, by the way. And then, but this is just to start off with. What's that? This is cumin. One tablespoon of cumin. And then I'm going to add one tablespoon of uh, garma masala. Is that how you pronounce that? Mm. Garam, is it? Garam. And then I'm going to add some turmeric. Amazing anti-inflammatory goodness of the turmeric. Same, the same amount. Yeah, if it comes out. Okay. okay, and then we are going to add 
some uh, cane and pepper. So this is where our heat cane. is going to... Cane. <laughs> cane is a small <laughs> Awesome. So we're just going to do about half, half a tablespoon of that. Okay, so this has been stirred again constantly for about the last three to five minutes. I say about five minutes. Again, you've got it on the lowest heat. You do not want this stuff to start to burn. And so now we're gonna add our onion. So I think we probably put about six large onions in this. Um, and then I am gonna add some more oil. So this is too dry at the moment. So I, because we're topping up the oil, we're also gonna have to top up the spices again. Do you want your red onion? Yeah! Thank you very much. Whoa! <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah, I remember you. You need a little stir. You need a little bit of comfort, don't you, Tarek? Uh. <laughs> That'll do. Okay, so that's one for you. So this is cumin. Whoops. That's one for you. This is coriander. Way <laughs> that was probably too much. Oh, I might just add it anyway. And then we have uh, grandma masala. Okay, and so I'm gonna stir that together. As you can see, so this this base is going to be for a lot of different curries. So I could probably make about four different types of curries out of this so if you imagine that that's quartered and each one of those will be your base for adding different ingredients so you can make a chicken curry you can make a lamb curry you could add um, cream you could add tomatoes you can do whatever you want with them once the base is done you are sorted for making all the delicious treats and they do all turn out tasting um, quite authentic but but different because you may not want cream in one particular one we're going to add cream to one of them today but today we're going to make uh, two to three different types of curry so stay okay, tuned. Okay so now we have been stirring this pretty much non-stop for the last 20 minutes and if you come closer you can see that it's got that really nice rich saucy look about it. It must not look dry. If it looks dry then you need to add a bit more oil. The important part is at the beginning of the recipe where you cook that garlic and those spices in the oil together because that will really create your foundation of flavour. Is now that we have that basic base, I'm going to trans... You can now use this to transfer into different saucepans to make a number of different curries. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this into three separate curries. So we're going to have a a chicken and tomato curry with some cream and probably some spinach. We're gonna have a vegetable curry with some lentils, some aubergines, some courgettes, some cauliflower, and we're gonna have basically like a um, bomb, a sagaloo. Hello, so how I'm gonna separate this out is I'm just gonna use a ladle just to take it out gently bit by bit, so. And then, as I say, this is your base, so then you'll then have three different types of curries, and depending on what you add to them will depend on what the outcome of the flavour is. So first of all, I'm going to add chicken to this one. And just cook that, make that a good sort of stir together. So then that is going to go in my back one over here. So I have added less sauce to this one because it's going to be a smaller dish, roughly. These potatoes, I haven't just peeled them and popped them in. I did parboil them for about 10 minutes and that just allows them to have the softness so that they can soak up the flavour. Okay, so for this one, uh, we're going to be adding some cauliflower and we're going to be adding some aubergine and some courgette. Whoops, lost the, lost the man. Ah, right, I'm just going to give this a stir so that it just sucks up all those delicious flavors. I've got about six, maybe seven large tomatoes in here. Fresh tomatoes are best. I'm just gonna add that to the chicken there. Okay, so, and then as you can see, what I'm doing as well is I just keep checking in on these two curries just to make sure there's enough liquid in there, give it a little bit of stir. And now to this one, I'm gonna add my lentils. So you don't, you probably, yeah. Yeah, so you could add salt yourself or you could be in France and the salt will already be deliciously given to you. Anyway, so we're going to mix that in. Season to flavour, people. 
I want to see it's um, cooked for a bit longer. I will try a little bit just to see if I want to add any cream. Okay, so these have been cooking for about another 10 to 15 minutes. As you can see, my um, tomato and chicken curry is coming along nicely. I have tried this, I've seasoned it to taste. It, it is absolutely delicious. You've got the potatoes, which will be a sagaloo at some point soon, gently frying in their own deliciousness. Again, I have seasoned that to taste, it's very nice. And then we have our vegetable curry, which is coming along beautifully. Now, for I'm actually going to add the cream to this one rather than this one because I love the flavor so much of this tomato and chicken one that I feel like it, it doesn't need an extra layer of change of flavor. So this is going to be our flavor change. So just going to add in some cream. I probably add, I've added about half of this carton. So that is Helen. How much is half a carton? Uh, I probably added about fifty percent. <laughs> <laughs> five tablespoons there. But what I'm going to do, I might add more in a little bit. I'm just going to let those flavors um, enrich together. Then I'm going to try it, and then I'm going to see if I want to add more or not. So in the end, I added about 150 mils worth of cream into our vegetable curry. And I've just tried it, and I'm still not 100% satisfied with the flavor, weirdly. So what I'm gonna do is a little trick. So since this, our chicken and tomato curry, has got a lot of excess liquid, and all I'm literally doing is just boiling that off now, I'm gonna take some of those delicious juices, it's a bit like stock, if you like, and I'm gonna add it to this one. I mean, obviously, if you're vegetarian, <laughs> then you're probably not going to be wanting to do that because this curry has had chicken in it. Okay, so, and there we have it. Uh, authentic Indian curry, three ways, with that one basic base. So in here, we have got essentially Bombay potatoes uh, mixed with spinach, or in this case, lamb lettuce. So we just pop that in there. Absolutely, so such good flavor. Really lovely depth of flavor. Then we have vegetable curry. So this is aubergine, courgette, cauliflower, delicious creamy flavors uh, with the added cream, of course. <laughs> Wonderful lentil curry right there. Again, the flavors are surprisingly different to the potato one. It's just amazing what that base can achieve. And then last but not least, this one is my favorite curry. So this we have um, chicken and tomato curry essentially, but it's just got a, such a, it's, I don't even know, words lose me. Such a deep, lovely, rich, not too tomatoey, but just good depth of flavor, you know? So this all came about because Paul is, he's got a lot of kitchen opinions, but no kitchen skill. And he was very much, you, you cannot make, there's no way that no. any sort of average white girl, let's be honest, <laughs> can make an authentic, proper Indian no, curry. And Claire was like, well, hello, what? surprise, my housemate was Indian. Yeah, she was, and she taught me really... how to make curry. So I bet you I can. And that's where this all came from. <laughs> so she made curry. Um, this was probably over early summer, last time you visited. Yeah. And it was absolutely delicious. And Paul was blown away. Yeah. And like, proven wrong. Make this for me every single time you come. So yeah, here it is again. Here it is. Ta-da. You're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> bon appetit. Bon appetit. And we're going to go and eat. <laughs> This is probably a good time to stop um, digging that hole at that end uh, because I'm running out of space to put the digger. Here we have our hole at the water source end. It's a little bit wet, which is why I'm slightly worrying. Then there's a nice 
gap and then there's the other hole at the other end. They nearly line up in a straight line, which is, is good. <laughs> Just with a little bit of a tweak. Okay, another day, some more digging. Uh, overnight, the, uh, the, hole that, the last hole that I dug against the water source has started to fill with water, um, which is sort of to be expected because uh, that's where the water source is exiting there and it's a little overflow. So I need to get these two uh, trenches joined together so that at least it can drain and not just film, form its own pond. Well, we have success. There she blows. The two halves are finally united with each other. Uh, I've let the water source um, overflow directly into this little trench at the minute because to be, uh, that stops the pond from overflowing and filling up and also it will help um, just get rid of all of the sort of light soil here and flatten this out a little bit naturally. Uh, hopefully it won't block the other end up. Uh, but there we go. So the next thing is going to be uh, go to the quarry and get a boatload of gravel so that we can line this trench and get the pipe uh, pipework sort of test fit into it. And the pipework is sort of over there-ish. Some of it anyway. The grey cylinders. And uh, so we've had this massive trench, which is my doing, I have to say, uh, for about two years of a pipe sort of laid in it halfway done. And this is where the hog was living. Yeah, we had a hog here. laid in it for a while as well. Um, but now we've finally bought the right pieces um, to sort this project out. Uh, so the plan is to install a drain in front of it, um, connect up to that pipe mm. and fill in the trench. Um, Look, here's the drain. Yes. Here's the drain. It's just a box. Get the grate and then we'll be able to see what we mean. <laughs> but look, we've got drilling to do. Oh, don't tell me about Everyone drilling. likes watching us doing drilling and getting it wrong and then everyone gets really angry with the tools we don't have. <laughs> Here is the grate. Oh. What? I thought I could just walk straight through that bit, but I'm not going to bother. Drain in front of the water source with some nice sort of stonework around it, made out of all of this recuperated stone that was um, in the ground. Um, all you will see is this great thing and some... The water actually comes out of here, so we've got to do some sort of magic to direct it into the right place. Uh, <laughs> we've got some bags of cement to do that magic. Yes, so yeah. magic will yeah. need to happen. Yeah. So the first thing I'm doing is just getting the mud out of the way so that we can um, get to the bits that we need to. So let's get into it. Oh, I didn't realise you were filming us. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were filming like that, the let's water source. Let's do it. Go on then. There we go. This is the back side of the water source, which is just here to my left. And there's Paul just clearing it out. Let's see if I can get down a bit further. I can, because I'm just on a bank here, but it is absolutely covered in brambles, so I don't want to go flying. <laughs> so we've come across a little bit of a problem. I think I might have um, dug up an old, uh, <laughs> dug out more to the point, an old um, lead pipe that was uh, sort of in the water source. <laughs> Somewhat. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't know where this was going. Much, much worse. Not much worse, but it is sort of leaking. 
a Show little bit. Me. Yes, and now there's a, a little sort of hole there. Farewell water source. <laughs> um, a cork would be required. I think there's one in that pot over there. Did you tip it on the floor? Ah, uh, no. No. No, I did you not. You tipped the water out. Pardon? You tipped the water out. Oh, you put a cork in there. Yeah. When you said pot, I didn't realise you meant drain. Yes. <laughs> Let's have a look. Drain. No, there is no longer a thing no, in there. No, you tipped it out. That's why. Yeah, you said, oh, it's full of water. You tipped it out. <laughs> Perhaps if you'd have said, oh, by the way, there's a cork in there I'd like to keep. I didn't know I'd like to keep it until now. <laughs> Never mind. I'm going to reach into the depths of this cave and find the hole and plug it. Ah, there it is. Oh, nearly. <laughs> I don't know if that's... It's still flowing. Stupid thing. Won't fit. Ow. Cork's too big. <laughs> well, new plan, just let it run out. <laughs> Ellie. <laughs> Ellie what? Continue. Okay. <laughs> Ow.